One of the biggest problems I see developers of all skill levels make is they litter things like database queries, authentication to get users, different libraries, and so on throughout their entire code base. This makes refactoring incredibly difficult, it makes changing libraries nearly impossible, and as your project grows, you realize that it's really difficult to maintain and share this code across your entire application, which makes development slow down to essentially a halt. That's why in this video, I'm going to be comparing the code base of two separate projects so you can see exactly the differences in how the code is structured. I'm going to show you the pros and cons, how I did things in one project versus how I did them in the other, and why you should most likely be using these adapter and facade style patterns in your projects. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream projects sooner. I'm going to be comparing and contrasting two different projects I built recently on this channel. One is for building out a parody deals clone. It was a video I just released not too long ago. And the other one's a Calendly clone, which is about a month or a month and a half old. They're both rather large scale projects. And in both these projects, I approach different things in different ways. I wanna show you the pros and cons of both. So in this original Calendly clone project, it's not as large of a project. So when it came to dealing with database access, I just put the database access directly where I needed it. For example, if we just go to a random page, we'll just go to the schedule page, for example. I'll make this a little bit larger. And actually what we'll need to do is look right here. You can see I have an await DB query to schedule in the table. So I have a database query directly right here inside of my app, my route page. And that's fine. You probably have this in a lot of your applications, but the thing that you'll notice if you do something like this is that it becomes very difficult to change database libraries. Now it's already difficult to change database libraries. It's probably not something you're gonna do very often, but if I were to wanna change database libraries from Drizzle to maybe Prisma or something else, or even just update Drizzle to a newer version and they change how these queries work, I now need to go to every single page in my entire application where I have a database query and update it in all those places. And they could be all over the place. There could be some inside my app folder. There may be some in this data folder, in this Drizzle folder, maybe in my lib folder I have certain things, my schema folder, my server folder definitely has some. So they're littered throughout my entire application. Just everywhere I needed a database query, I just directly wrote that database query in line throughout my entire application. Now, if we go ahead and look at the parity deals project I built, this was a bit of a larger project. And we pull up, you can see inside the service section, I have a DB folder. And inside of here is where I have every single one of my database queries. So anytime I access my database in my entire project, it comes from this database folder right here. There's nowhere else in my entire application that I access the database anywhere. If we just scroll down to one of these functions, for example, you can see directly inside of here, I'm running a database query using Drizzle. These projects both use Drizzle, so they're very similar, but you can see here, I'm only ever using my database directly in this DB folder. And to be able to do a quick test of that, I can essentially text for anywhere that I'm importing my database. So I can just essentially search for this import line everywhere inside of my project. And if I expand that, you'll notice that the only places I'm importing this is in my source server DB folder, as you can see in all these different files. And then I technically have it imported in one other file. The only reason I have it imported in this file instead of in the database file is because this is something that's not actually a part of my application. This is like a command line tool that I can run as part of my application. So I consider it entirely separate from my application. That's the only reason I have some database code in here, but I could easily move that to the database folder. I just wanted to keep my application code separate from my command line code because they're essentially entirely different things. But as you can see, it's only in those few files. Well, if we come over to the Calendly clone project and we do a quick search for that exact same thing, we're gonna import from the database. You can now see I have this in a bunch of different files and you can see it spread everywhere throughout my entire application. Some in the server folder, some in my lib folder, some here inside of my app across a bunch of different pages. And obviously if this was a larger scale application, there would be hundreds of different files that this would be stored in. While in this other example, you can see it's all condensed to one particular section. Now this idea of essentially putting all of your library related code inside of one section is similar to the facade pattern or the adapter pattern. Essentially the idea behind these patterns, the facade pattern is essentially what you do is you create a layer in front of the library that you're working with. So what I'm doing here is instead of directly calling like db.query, what I'm doing is I'm creating a function, get product country groups. And that function is essentially doing all of my database queries for me. So I'm essentially removing myself one layer from whatever library or API I'm using. By calling a function inside my application, I can now change the internals of this function to Prisma, for example, and the rest of my code doesn't need to change at all. It'll all work exactly the same. So the benefits of doing this is, like I said, you can change out your libraries a lot easier. Now, it's not going to be a perfect one-to-one -one swap, especially when you're doing something as large as swapping your database ORM. That's a huge change. But if you're working with a smaller library, it's really useful to have them kind of tucked away inside of this facade pattern or this adapter pattern, where you can kind of just change the internal workings of that function instead of having to change every single instance of where you use that code inside of your application. Another benefit is 
it makes refactoring so much easier because now anytime that I want to change my get product function, I can just change it right here. So for example, this function is used in many places in my application. You can see if I search for get product, let's just make it do like an import, something like that. You can see I have this being imported in a lot of different places. It's not a perfect search, but I'm importing this in many places in my application. You can just trust me on that. It's all over my application. And if I wanna change how get product works, I can change it in this one particular section. Over here, if I wanted to change how something worked, for example, how inserting an event worked, I would need to go to every single place where I inserted an event in my database and change it manually. So that's much harder to refactor because now I have infinite places that I could change this thing, while in the other example, I literally have one source of truth where I need to change everything. Now you may think this sounds really interesting. You immediately wanna go ahead and start just changing all the libraries to put them behind your own functions to make them easier to work with. But there's certain libraries that I find it a little bit harder to actually do this with. For example, auth is one where it's really hard to extract that away. I think it's really useful if you can, but usually these auth libraries are so deeply integrated into your entire application, it can become hard to actually break those out into their own thing. For example, if I just go into one of my app pages, we'll just come into here. Let's just open up one, for example, on the dashboard. We'll go to the analytics page. And you can see at the very top of this page and pretty much every page in my application, I'm checking to see if I have a user, I'm redirecting, and I'm using that user ID in probably multiple different places. You can see I'm passing it down here and so on. So I'm using this user ID in a ton of different places in my application. Now, this would be a rather easy function for me to just to create my own auth function that returns, for example, user ID and a redirect to sign. And in that way, if I want to change out my auth library, I can very easily do that because right now, if I change my auth library, I need to change every single place where I call this function. But a lot of times your auth library, like I said, is so integrated into your application, it can become difficult. Now, I would recommend if you're planning on building a larger scale application, break this out into its own function. Create, for example, a folder or a file, we'll just call this auth.ts, and inside here, we'll just export a function called like get user ID. And that can essentially do exactly this. We can call this auth function just like that. We can get our user ID from it and we can return the user ID just like that. And obviously I would wanna make sure I import this. And there we go. Now I have a get user ID function. I could use that in place right here. And essentially my code would work exactly the same as it did before, as long as I get this redirect to sign in as well. So this is a way where now if I change my auth provider to maybe roll my own auth instead of using clerk, all I have to do is change this one function and it's completely done throughout my entire application. So this is an instance where I didn't actually use this best practice in my code and it will come to bite me in the future if I ever decide to change out the library or if, for example, clerk massively does an update and changes how everything inside a clerk works, well, now I need to go to every single page and change that. While if I were to have my own wrapper, I would change it in one file. This is actually why a lot of times if you work in a project and you notice a lot of the dependencies are really out of date, this is one of the main reasons why dependencies get out of date because they add breaking changes and those breaking changes are so difficult to implement because that code is so deep woven throughout your entire application that it's just easier to deal with the old out-of-date deprecated code than it is to go ahead and actually spend the time to update all of the different dependencies through your entire project to make it work. Now obviously there's certain libraries where you use it like once or twice through your entire project so it really doesn't make sense making all this extra layers of abstraction because those extra layers of abstraction take time, they take effort, you have to test them, they require maintenance so adding those extra layers of abstraction does take extra time on top of everything but if you're planning on using something throughout multiple places in your project, maybe you need to use it in like four or five, six different places, or you just use it across your entire application, that's when you maybe want to think, okay, you know what? I'm going to take this thing for accessing my users or accessing my database or accessing my permissions. I'm going to move it into its own particular folder or file structure. This is kind of how a lot of these applications come to be. For example, when I was building this Parity Deals clone project originally, what I did is I had my database calls directly in line in all my different files. I would have my database calls and I started to realize, oh, you know what? I'm getting products here. So I copied the code, pasted it into the next place that I needed to get the product. And I was like, okay, cool. I pasted my get product code into here. And then I was like, oh, you know what? I also need to get the product on this page. Oh, you know what? I need to get the product on this page too. So there are so many different places that I was getting the product that I realized, you know what? I should probably move this into its own file. So that's what I did. I was like, okay, I'm gonna move that into its own file. And then I started to think, okay, there's a lot of places where I'm duplicating all my different database queries. I should just move all my database queries into their own particular section of my application. That way it has one central place where it lives. This makes refactoring easy because now I have one place to go to to change all of it. And it just makes working with the code easier because if I need to add a database query, boom, I just do it inside this database file and I know it's always going to be there and it's always going to work. And if I need to debug something with a database, it's all right in that same folder. Now, I know this is a relatively simple and quick video, but if you enjoy these clean code style videos, I have a bunch more of them. I'll link a few of the best over here. Highly recommend you check them out. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.